Hello everybody, this is Miss Ludwig. Today we are going to be doing your PT1 notes, the first set of notes in your periodic table lab notebook. So go ahead and turn to page 7 in your notes. Alright, so this guy is Dmitry Mendeleev. He is kind of the rock star of the periodic table. He was a Russian scientist who discovered a pattern in elements properties. He is the guy that published, published the first periodic table way back in the 1860s. So the periodic table is nothing new. It's been around for a really long time, although you can see on the bottom of your screen, it has changed a lot over time. Um, over here, see, right over here, is kind of the first versions of the periodic table that Mendeleev published. Um, it looks a lot different today, but it's actually set up very similarly. It just looks different. Um, he studied all of these elements and realized that they had specific properties, which we'll be talking about here shortly. Um, and so you could put them in a certain order based on each element's properties. He was so good at his job in figuring out this stuff that he actually realized um, he was able to guess and make predictions about elements that had not even been discovered based on the way that he was organizing the elements in this table. So he was able to guess that, you know, right over here where we've got these dashes, we didn't know what element that was going to be yet, but he knew exactly what that element was going to be like based on his um, way of arranging elements. He is known also as the father of the periodic table. So that's Dmitry Mendeleev. A couple of other really important people in a periodic table and in chemistry are, one, this guy, Henry Becquerel. He discovered radioactive decay by accident in 19, or 1896 while studying the element uranium. So radioactive decay just really briefly means that some of the particles on an atom, so we've learned about protons, neutrons, electrons, um, sometimes in some elements, though the nucleus of the atom is unstable, and so parts of it kind of fly off and the element can turn into another version of itself, or it can turn into another element altogether. So he's kind of the guy that realized that in some of his research. Um, another person that we really like to talk about is Marie Curie. She was actually um, the first woman to get a lot of credit for these kind of scientific discoveries in chemistry and stuff. Um, and she studied uranium nuclei, so the nucleus of the element uranium, and she called the emission of radiation radioactivity. So we're familiar with things um, that are radioactive and some of the elements are radioactive, for example, uranium. Um, and she's kind of the person that came up with this stuff and discovered it. So here's how this periodic table is set up. These are the very basics of the periodic table. Our horizontal rows are what we call periods. So when I say horizontal rows, I'm talking about from left to right across the periodic table. So on the left, you see these numbers one through seven. So these, there are seven periods. So this is the first period, the second period goes across left to right, then we come down to the third period and so on. Um, the elements that are down below, a lot of you have asked me about them. Um, these elements actually belong up in rows six and seven. They're part of the period six and seven. Uh, we just put them down here because they have some special properties and because um, it makes the periodic table too long, actually. And so we move them out so it kind of fits on a piece of paper better. The other thing that you've heard a lot about already because we've been studying these elements is based on groups. So our vertical columns from top to bottom are called groups or sometimes even called families. So the first group is group one right here, the alkali metals. Group two is the alkaline earth metals. We'll be talking a lot more about the names of these different groups, but we go from one all the way to 18. So there are 18 groups on the periodic table. The reason that we call them families sometimes is because elements that are in the same group, so if they're all in this vertical column number one right here, they have things in common, just like you have things in common with your family members. So um, for example, group one, the alkali metals, any of these metals, not hydrogen, this is hydrogen, but from lithium down, these elements will react with water. So if I toss them in water, they will explode. But group number two, they have different properties. They don't do the same thing. Um, all of the elements in group 18, the noble gases, they don't react at all. So they have those things in common. 
So the periodic table is just a chart of elements showing a repeating pattern of their properties. It is arranged in order of atomic number. So this periodic table right here is exactly the one that you are going to get on your EOG at the end of this year. And um, you've probably noticed that, for example, hydrogen is number one, and then we go across helium is number two. And when you come down one period into the second period, Lithium is 3, beryllium is 4, boron is 5, etc. These numbers are called atomic numbers. So that is the way that the periodic table is organized by atomic number. Hydrogen is 1, helium is 2, and so on. So all of the things that are on um, each square of the periodic table have meaning, and we're going to learn all of that throughout this unit. So on each individual square on the periodic table, and this is an example of one element, um, there is some very important information. The very top number is called the atomic number, and there is a diagram in your notes on page 7 that looks just like this. Um, so and it has some lines on it just like I do. You need to be filling in what these things are called on the side. Okay. So, the top number is always the atomic number. So for this element, for iron, the atomic number is 26. This is the chemical symbol for iron, Fe. Um, we've been studying those for your periodic table elements quizzes. So we know that some elements like hydrogen start with H and that makes sense. Um, and I've told some people in my class that some of them like iron starts with Fe instead of I. And that's because a lot of the elements names are derived from different languages, Latin and Greek. Um, and I think Fe is the Latin word for ferrum, which means iron. So it's Fe. The next thing is the element's name. So this element is iron. And then lastly is the atomic mass at the bottom. Okay, so we have two different numbers on each um, element. The top number is the atomic number, the bottom number is the atomic mass. All right, so we've talked about what these numbers are called and what these symbols are, but all of these numbers also mean something. So the atomic number is the number of protons, the number of positively charged um, subatomic particles in the nucleus of the atom. It is also the number of electrons. So iron, if somebody asked me how many protons does iron have, I would look at the atomic number and say it has 26 protons, but it also has 26 electrons. The atomic mass, which is the bottom number, that is the mass of the atoms for that element. The mass number is actually the same thing as the atomic mass, but we like to round it into a whole number. So if you remember your rules of rounding, um, 55.847, the 0.8, we would round that up to a whole number of 56. So for iron, the mass number would be 56. And the reason we do that is because it's actually the number of protons plus the number of neutrons in the nucleus of one iron atom. So you just want to around the um, bottom number here to a whole number because when we start trying to figure out how many neutrons are in the nucleus of an element, um, we need to do a little bit of math and it makes our math easier. Okay, so again, if I asked you um, for this element, for iron, how many protons are in the element iron, you would look at this top number, the atomic number, and you would say 26 protons. If I wanted to know the number of electrons in one atom of iron, I would also look at the atomic number. Remember, the atomic number is the number of protons, but it's also the number of electrons. Then lastly, when we want to know the number of neutrons in an atom of an element, we have to do a little bit of math. And to make that math easier, we take the bottom number, the atomic mass, and we round it to the nearest whole number. So again, 55.8 would round up to 56. And then we take the bottom number minus the top number. So 56 minus 26, we would have 30 neutrons in one atom of iron. Okay, and this is just a good little way of trying to remember what all those numbers mean and how to figure this stuff out. So you can remember the atomic number by remembering ape. The atomic number is the same as the number of protons, which is also the same as the number of electrons, APE. Atomic number equals protons equals electrons.
And then over here, if you remember man, this is how we figure out the number of neutrons. You take the mass number, which is the bottom number rounded to a whole number, minus the top number, the atomic number, and that equals the number of neutrons in the nucleus of one atom of a certain element. So ape man, remember that. Okay, so here's what we need to do next. Um, we're going to do a little bit of examples of trying to figure out what is the atomic number, atomic mass, protons, neutrons, electrons of a few different elements. So this is the first example. This is phosphorus, all right, um, a little blurry there, but the atomic number of phosphorus is, again, that top number. So the atomic number of phosphorus is 15. The atomic mass is the bottom number, so 30.97. The mass number is, again, the same as the bottom number, 30.97, but we need to round that to a whole number. So my rules of rounding, I do 30.9. That means I need to round up. So my mass number for phosphorus would be 31. Now to figure out the number of protons, neutrons, and electrons, we are going to look at those numbers again. So remember, the number of protons is always the same as the atomic number, the number on top. So we have 15 protons in one atom of the element phosphorus. For my neutrons, we need to do subtraction. We take the mass number, which was 31, because I rounded this to a whole number. 31 minus 15 gives me 16. And then lastly, the electrons is the same as the atomic number, 15. So protons and electrons, whenever I figure these up, I always do protons and electrons first, um, because it's the same number. Protons are 15 because the atomic number is 15. Electrons are 15 because the atomic number is 15. The neutrons is the rounded bottom number, mass number, minus the top number. All right. Now, on page 12 in your packet, go ahead and flip. There's a couple of examples, and you will work those out with me. So, on page 12, we see this one. Um, this element is gold. We're missing the symbol. The symbol for gold is AU. Go ahead and fill this in. The atomic number. Remember, the atomic number is the top number. So for gold, that would be 79. The atomic mass is the bottom number. So 196.967. Then the number of protons is the same as the atomic number. So I have 79 protons. The neutrons are this rounded bottom number minus the top number. So 196.9 is going to round up to 197 minus 79. And so that equals 118. 197 minus 79, bottom number minus top number. And the number of electrons, again, is the same as the top number, the atomic number. All right, next example. Hydrogen. So this is... The first one on the periodic table, H, that is hydrogen. Our atomic number is the number on top, that is 1. The atomic mass is the number on bottom, 1.008. The number of protons is the same as the atomic number, the top number. So I have one proton in hydrogen. The neutrons, again, is the rounded bottom number, 1.008. So that's 0, I'm just going to leave this the same. This would just be a whole number, 1. 1 minus 1 equals 0. And the number of electrons is the same as the atomic number. Again, it is 1. All right, let's do one more example. If you want, go ahead and pause the video and see if you can do this on your own. And then you can unpause and I will tell you the answers. Okay, so this element is Mn, which is manganese. Its atomic number is number 25 at the top. Its atomic mass at the bottom is 54.938. The number of protons, again, is the number on top, 25. The number of neutrons, I have to do my subtraction. So I need to take this number, 54.9, rules of rounding says rounded up to 55 as a whole number. 55 minus 25 gives me 30. And then the last one is the electrons, which is the same as the protons. That would be 25 again, the same as the atomic number. Make sure you have all those answers written down. Thanks for watching.